you, you mentioned Alzheimer's, but this, this is obviously something that's, that's so prevalent, so important for people as they age and their, their brain health. And, and obviously everyone was, is justifiably very concerned about developing dementia and Alzheimer's. This is something that, again, is, is, is very new. You know, about 50 years ago, 60 years ago, we just we did not see uh, the numbers and the prevalence of uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, this is something that people are calling type three diabetes now, um, which I've, I've certainly heard, but that I think that, that, um, this is, this would be something that, uh, that you would know quite a lot about, I would assume. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is an active area of uh, research topic in my lab now. Um, yeah, the, the classic view on Alzheimer's is that it was a disease of plaques accumulating in the brain and that paradigm has started to fall out of favor insofar as we have a lot of drugs now that will reduce plaques and it doesn't help the disease. Mm. And we have evidence from humans, um, from cadavers, people who died with and without Alzheimer's disease, you know, people with no evidence of Alzheimer's disease, and they'll have a brain that has lots of plaques in it. And yet it didn't appear to uh, force uh, a compromised mm. cognition at all. And this is provided an opportunity for the metabolic view of Alzheimer's to come in which, uh, and there's long been evidence for this, and, and you'd mentioned this term type 3 diabetes, a more a, a people will use that term. I don't love it. I prefer insulin resistance of the brain because it's just more precise, but that's basically what it is. In insulin resistance, the brain has affected, the, the brain has become affected, and it can't use insulin well enough to open up the glucose transporters to fuel the brain because glucose is a primary fuel, and some of that glucose uptake is dependent on insulin opening the glucose transporters. Well, you have a compromised glucose uptake, which means the brain, the brain starts to go hungry. And that matters because the brain has a very high metabolic rate. And if it can't get all its energy from glucose, now you have an energetic gap. That gap could be filled by ketones. However, in the same person who's insulin resistant, and not able to use glucose very well, they don't have any ketones because they're hyperinsulinemic. They have elevated insulin. And as you said, and we've mentioned repeatedly, insulin inhibits ketogenesis. And so the brain is swimming in a sea of glucose that it can't use. It's calling out for this life raft in the form of ketones that insulin simply won't let the brain get. Uh, and thus we're left with the hungry brain. Um, and there's evidence in humans to show that if you start to fill that gap with ketones, giving a person like a ketone ester, you do improve their cognition. They, mm. they do start to think better. Not that we've cured the disease, nothing, nothing so grand as that, but it, we've, we've helped tip it back a little bit. And that to me is a bit of a win in a disease where there are never any wins. Mm -hmm. And so my view on, in, uh, on Alzheimer's is if you've already got it, if, if a, pay, a loved one already has it, try to increase those ketones any way we can. If we want to keep it at bay, keep your brain insulin sensitive and give it some ketones from time to time, you know, for goodness sakes let it have some ketones, which yeah. is a preferred fuel if there is any preferred fuel. Yeah. And, and just, and just bypassing that, uh, that insulin resistance is, uh, you yep. know, it is, it just makes so much sense. And it, it's just a sneaky way of getting your brain working again. Um, that's right. and, um, that, you know, that's, a, that's another thing too. You know, we, we've been, we've put everybody on a, on a low fat, so-called heart healthy diet, but as you mentioned, you know, the brain is you know, pr primarily made out of fat. It's, it's something like, you know, solid uh, components is about 70% uh, fat and 20% of those are just DHA. And, you know, so, and, and the, that doesn't exist in, in plants. It doesn't exist in, you know, nope. plant oil, seed oils. Um, and then you have the, the very long chain fatty acids, 20 and 22 chain fatty acids, which again, don't exist in plants. We were not very good at making them. We do make some and we, but we not enough. No, certainly not. Yeah. And so you have to get these from your diet, but we've been told since, since the night, late 1970s earlier, really, but officially since the late 1970s, uh, you know, the pretty diet came out. My father was a big proponent of that growing up and we just, there was just no fat in the house. And, uh, when I was growing up, which probably, you know, curtailed our own neural, uh, development and brain development, but every now and then my mom would get like bacon or like some fat thing and just sort of look at this, like, are oh, you supposed to eat that? <laughs> everything in your body was contraband. Just, yeah. yeah. Everything in your body was just like, it's just like, this is life. This is everything you should, should be eating, but you felt you were conditioned to this is gross. And, and you sort of feel, yeah. Oh God, oh, I can't believe I ate that. And, yeah. 
but thank God I, I, I you know, I did uh, succumb to my instincts a, a few times. Um, and, um, you know, enough to avoid irreparable damage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, poor it, little, poor little Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at least to a certain extent, you know, because, you know, I, I you yeah. know, yeah, we we look at our you know anthropologically, we look at the you know the size of brains ha has decreased. Oh, yeah, recently, you know, like like I think like eleven percent since the agricultural revolution. That's pure. That's not genetic. That that's purely environmental. And and so yeah. uh, we we all got robbed by a good ten percent of our brains that that's ours by rights, and um, and that bugs me. But what bugs me more is that you know now you know, people are, are just not eating fat and, and I think the, their brains are decaying and not able to maintain, uh, maintain and, and, uh, rebuild their brain, uh, to an extent that it starts to atrophy. You know, we have, we have MRIs that you just have aging brains and, and, and they atrophy and they get, you know, they get, they get so much sh more shrunken down than, than you would believe. You look at a, at a kid's MRI, it's just every, every corner of the skull is just, just packed and just stuffed in with brains. And, and early adolescence and adulthood is the same way. And then it, as you go, your, your ventricles, which are the spaces inside the brain that the, the cerebral spinal fluid flows around uh, or is formed in and then flows around. These are usually very slit-like in uh, adolescence and early adulthood. And then just they do widen and widen and widen. And then the, the you know, the sulci and the gyri, the sulci, the, the dips in between the folds of the brain, they just start widening and widening and widening. And you, you look at this and it's like the actual mass of the brain has just decreased by such a degree. And when you think about how many billions of, of cells, of neurons are in the brain, like how many hundreds of millions or, you know, a billion or more neurons you basically uh, have, have just wasted away. That, that, that is, that is frightening to me. Um, and then, you know, I, I, and so that would, likely be a combination of not getting enough energy to the brain to maintain it and also not getting you know sort of the requisite fatty acids to the brain what are you well what are you... i can't i can't think i can't help but think this is also a contributor to the increased depression and anxiety we have in in adults yeah. and and kids and there are a lot that's multifactorial no doubt mm. but we also know that in strict adherence to vegan diets suicidality goes up depression goes up mm. neurological problems follow when the brain is deprived yeah. and now uh, this it could be coincidence this is not my area of research i'm just struck by the coincidence that we have a culture that is depriving the brain of its essential nutrients and yeah. we wonder at this this plague of of depression and anxiety yeah well you, you, you but you're you're exactly right you know because there actually have been studies and published in psychiatric journals looking at even even things as schizophrenia and different sorts of psychiatric Ill, Ill issues it is actually benefited by putting people on at least a ketogenic or even a, you know just an elimination diet and, and specifically with depression uh cholesterol cholesterol has been uh implicated or at least strongly associated with uh um depression and anxiety so lower uh, LDL cholesterol is associated with a much with a much higher rate of depression and uh, interestingly enough lower people with low LDL cholesterol and depression have a much higher rate of suicide so this is something that psychiatrists are now uh, pushing their depressed patients to get their cholesterol up and thankfully this is this is sort of coming around but there's still so many doctors and obviously, you know, most, most, uh, you know, people in the public, they still are in this uh, idea and mindset that fat is bad for you. Cholesterol is going to kill you. Uh, but unfortunately doctors are still thinking this and it's just like, this is, this has been out, you know, the journal of American medical association published in 2015, that this was a hoax. So this was bought and paid for by the sugar companies that cholesterol was never even associated with, with heart disease. And, um, and, uh, you know, and, and so this is, this is, this is out there, but yet they're not, they're not um, looking at that. Um, no, no, it's a slow moving ship and it's taking yeah. time to turn around, but there are those of us that are on speedboats and we've already turned it around. Yeah. Um